So let's get on with making some arrows. This is the exciting part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by making a rectangle, just a long rectangle like that. And then I want two more squares, basically, which are the same height. So I'm going to click on the duplicate button and I'm going to move this across. So I'm moving the duplicate across to there and you can see it lines up perfectly. Those smart guides are showing me that it's perfectly in line. And I'm going to make that a lot smaller, maybe something along that line. And then I want another one of those. So I'm going to duplicate that again and then move another copy across to there. Now the color that I've got here really doesn't matter. It's just so that you can see what's going on. We'll put the gradients on in a little while. What I'm going to do now is to double click on this first rectangle. And of course, as you know, that takes me into isolation mode. So now I can use my pen and I'm going to click in the middle of the end bit to add a point. And I'm going to use my direct selection tool to pull that point out. And that's what makes my little arrow in there. So now this is still a straight line. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to get it to look like it's in, it's got perspective to it and, and we've got depth in there and it's kind of coming up towards us. And I'm going to do that by using the direct selection tool and moving these points here. So I've selected the one point of the one shape and the one point of the other. So I've clicked and dragged across to select those two points. And then I want to move that point upwards. This whole thing, of course, is just a, a trick of the eye to get that sort of depth and shape. So I'm going to move that up. And you can either do it manually or you can go along to your properties. And in your properties, I've got X and Y in there. If I click in Y, you can see that I can actually move it up like that. And if I was being very, very accurate about this, what I'd be thinking of doing is putting an exact uh, number in there. So let me do the same thing with the other one over here, although we actually won't see the other one, but I'm still going to do it because we'll see it on the very bottom one. So I'm going to select that, go into Y, and then we'll move this one down a bit like so. Now, how much you want to do this really depends on you. And if you've looked at one, you thought, oh, that's not enough. You just click it again and go and make a change in there. Right, I kind of like what I've got there. So I'm going to stop at that point and I want to have three of these. And they're all going to be slightly different sizes, but for now I'm just going to copy them all and move them down. Yeah, we'll just pull that around a little bit and then I can select the individual parts and say these two parts here, I'm going to pull them out like that. Going to do it again. So I'm going to select these three here, copy them, move them down, move the copy down, and we'll move this forward a little bit like that. And then same again, I can select these two and pull them out to change the scaling. And you can do whatever you want with that. Lastly, to change the length of these items here, we're not going to grab it and pull it in like that because as you can see, it affects the angle of that arrow. We want to keep that arrow the same. So I'm going to double click it. That takes me into isolation mode. Use my direct selection tool to select all three of those points. And then I can move those points in like that. Let me do that again. On the next one, I'm going to double click into isolation mode. I can select those three points there and I can then move them in. And if you, once again, if you want to be more accurate, you can go into your properties up here and you can just move them around like that. So I'm going to move that bit in a bit there. I'm going to go back to the first one and make that smaller still. So I'm going to double click, select those points there, and then in the oh, wrong one, in the X, that way, I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull those in a little bit like so. Right, so there's quite a few things in there to um, to get going with. If I did go through it a bit faster than you'd like, just go back on this video and watch it a few times and try creating something like that. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to set up the gradients on there 
and then it'll start to really, really come to life. So this is the exciting part. This is putting some gradients in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the one at the top and select it. And I'm going to add a gradient. So I think I'd like mine to be the green one at the top, greenish. And then I'm going to go to the bottom one over here, select that one. Doesn't matter what order you do these in, to be honest. And then there's this one here. Now this one I'm going to select, hold down the primary touch so I can select these two rather than just clicking and dragging over them because otherwise I might select the other ones by mistake. And then that will be my mid gradient. Oh, missed that one. Mid gradient over there. Now the next thing to do is to get rid of the stroke on here. So we're going to choose a none for the stroke. And then we need to adjust these gradients still because they're not quite right. So I'm going to go to the top one up here and I'm going to click on this middle box in there and I want to adjust that gradient. So I'll go along to the gradient tool and then the top bit here that is selected at the moment, oops, let's just undo that. I think that should be lighter. So I need to go and find the appropriate color in here and choose the lightest part in there. This next one down here, I probably don't need that, so I'll just pull it off. That color is absolutely fine there, but this one here really should probably be one of the darker ones like that. So I'm, I'm looking to kind of get the light part coming up to the point. Yeah. And then I'll do the same with the others. So I'll just work my way through them. Once I've done those, I'll go to this last one here, and I think the dark part is too dark on there. So same again, I will go over to the gradient, and then maybe for this last part here, which is selected at the moment, I might just choose the darkest color, or the second darkest color in there. Or I might even manually adjust it to taste until I go, oh yeah, kind of like what I've got in there. Now don't worry about this middle section here that you're not actually seeing that corner because we're going to put something on there to give it a really nice shine shortly. But just have a go with those other gradients and I've done one but if you want to do all three of them and um, while you're trying that out I will get these ones done as well so they'll be ready for the next lecture. Anyway give it, give it a go. Be careful if you do make a mistake just use your two fingers to undo. So let's get some highlights going on here. And I'm going to do that surprisingly using a gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new gradient. So I'll just do it on a little ellipse and I'm going to do it right over here so that you can see what I'm doing against a dark background. So I'm on my elliptical shape there. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to choose radial. Now I don't want any of these little um, controls in here so I can just click on them and then delete them. So let's go to this one here and delete that one. This middle one, oh, I keep missing it. What I'm really after is to have white in my gradient. So I'm going to just choose white for all of these colors or all of these points in here. That one, make that one white. And this little one here, which is, doesn't want to move. There it is, can bin that. So we've got white going out to white. So the outer white one now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the transparency over here, and I'm going to change the transparency and just going to take it to zero. So you can see what we've got there is a gradient that goes from white through to transparent. And then I can click on this little um, controller at the top and pull this in. So what that does now is it gives me a shape which goes from white through to transparent. If I put it on top of that, you can see what it's doing. And I can use that to make highlights. So I'm going to rotate it around like this. And let's move it over there so you can see it properly. I'm going to squish it down to make it really, really narrow and thin like that, maybe pull it in a little bit, like so. And that is going to be my highlight. So I'm going to put that right on the edge. Then we have this beautiful soft 
highlight on the edge. Now all I've got to do is to take a copy of that and then move it up for the other two. Now this one here, unfortunately, is um, showing up on my shape at the bottom. So obviously I'm sure you've realized this by now. All we need to do is to take that and take it below that shape. Let's get one last one on the other one. And of course, if you make them even thinner still, you'll find that um, you can get a much sharper edge in there. Just pop that into the right position. There. So one more. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to move it right up to the top, the copy up to the top there. Like so, and where it's covering the other one, I'm going to move it underneath in my layers. Oh, I don't think I quite got it there, so do I move the right one. That's the one. Okay. And that gives us those really nice crisp edges. If you find that they are too crisp for you, well, all you have to do is to go to your transparency and reduce the transparency of them. So same again over here, I can just go in, reduce the transparency of those. We don't want people to go, wow, what nice crisp edges. We just want them to look at it and go, oh, that looks really cool. It's a lovely infographic. So have a go with those, pop on some of, of them, and then we'll come back. We're going to use a similar technique for the shadows underneath.